In today's video, we are going to learn 10 tips on writing clean code that is easy to understand. We'll go through a common game development example and refactor bad code. As an example, we will use the simplest possible FPS game with player movement and shooting. As a starting point, we will use the project from the package linked in the description below. Next week, we will see 10 more tips, so stay tuned and subscribe to not miss it. But before we start, a little introduction. You are watching Game Dev Chef, a game development channel with wide-ranging quality content. You can learn here how to implement popular game features, create your own AI systems that you will be able to use in your own games, you will learn here how to develop for various platforms like PC, mobile, VR, and even create fully functional games. Please consider subscribing and help us grow the channel stronger. Now let's hop back to Unity and begin. Rule number one, use descriptive variable names and avoid abbreviations. Let's open the player manager script. At the top of the class, we are declaring some variables. If you look at their names, we can clearly see that not all of them have a clear intent. Let's look at the first variable named weapon. What exactly is that collection? We can be more descriptive here. That collection holds all available weapons for the player to use. So let's change the name of this variable to available weapons. Now that we know the rule, let's go through all the fields in the class. The rifle transparent is very misleading, so let's use the whole word transform in the variable name. Now a little challenge. Stop the video and try to fix all of the other variable names. Okay, let's check how I did it. So rot speed should be rotation speed. Mouse sense should be mouse sensitivity. Source should tell the reader what kind of source is this. So let's change it to audio source. And let's change RB to simply rigid body. And lastly, all variables starting with letters CUR, which in this context is an abbreviation of the word current, should be changed to use the full word. Because we changed the field names, all of the inspector values that were set before now are gone and we have to set them up again. So let's go back to Unity, find the player object and fill with similar values as were before. Now let's hit play and give it a little test to see if we didn't miss something. And everything works as before, we can move, change weapons and shoot enemies. Now we can move on to the rule number two. Rule number two. Don't use short undescriptive method names. When naming a method, you should follow this rule. When a new person to the project reads your method's names, he should know what each of your methods do without reading the code, but only by reading the name. Let's take a look at the rotate method. Can we know exactly what this method does when we read its name? Not necessarily. We can assume that it rotates the player object, but we could be mistaken. So let's be clear here and explicitly say what we are rotating in this method. Changing the name to rotate player object is much more precise. Rule number three. Methods should do one and one thing only. Don't do two things in one method, especially when one of those things is not expected by a user. Whenever your method uses words like and, if, or, that probably means that your method does too much and should be split into multiple methods. In the player manager class, we can see an obvious example of breaking this rule. It's the set active weapon and initialize variables method. We should split this method into two separate ones, even if we call them only once. We do it for better readability here. So let's copy the method, delete initializing variables from one of them, and remove setting active weapon part from the second one. Name one set active weapon and second one initialize variables. Rule number four. When a method has a lot of indentations or end is too long, extract methods from it. Let's take a look at the update method in the player manager class. It is a very long method with bad readability. Let's try to extract methods from it and make it more readable. Going from the top, we can extract the code that is called when the mouse scroll is scrolled down. That code is responsible for changing the weapon in player's hands. 
So let's extract and call it switch to previous weapon. Let's also do the same for the code below. This code is responsible for changing the weapon to the next one. So let's call the method switch to next weapon. Next, the code that is called when the R button is clicked is responsible for reloading a weapon. So let's also extract and call the method reload. Also, move the rotate player object method call to the top of the update method. We can extract one more method here. It will contain switching weapons up and down. So let's call it handle weapon switching. And lastly, let's extract the rest of the method that is only responsible for shooting a weapon to a separate method called handle shooting. Also move the handle shooting method near the handle weapon switching. If we take a look at the handle shooting method, we can see that there are still a lot of indentations and the code should be more readable. Let's extract code from each of the switch cases to separate methods each responsible for shooting a different weapon. Now our update method is much shorter. We can clearly see what happens just by looking at the method's names. We also removed a lot of indentations, but there are still some parts of that method that don't look right. So let's move to the next rule. Rule number five, avoid so-called zombie code. Zombie code is referred to commented out code that was probably left by some developer with intent to maybe someday restore that code. There is no need for that. Aversion control systems are for that purpose. We can revert code if needed and restore old version. Commented code like that is very confusing to new developers in the team. In the update method, there is some leftover code used to rotate a player. We have that functionality already in a separate method so there is no need for this code to stay here and we can safely remove it. This brings us to the next comment related rule, rule number six, don't allow divider comments. Before, when the update method was very long, people writing code decided to add comments to declare what happens where. This is a clear sign of bad code. We basically fixed it before by extracting methods. Now our method names tell us the whole story of the update method and the divider comments are not necessary. A properly written method almost never needs divider comments. Rule number seven, Boolean variable names should sound like questions. Let's take a look at the Boolean variable running in the player manager class. Can we really know when reading usages of this variable what this exactly means? Maybe, but not all the time. So let's be explicit here when naming Booleans Good rule of thumb is to add words like is or has to the boolean variable names. Let's change the running variable name to is running. Now we are clear with intent. Rule number eight. Variable assignments should be done in a single line or with ternary operator whenever possible. Let's take a look at the move speed in the fixed update method. Here we are deciding what speed a player will move based on the is running variable. We can change the four line assignment functionality to a one line using the ternary operator. So let's just do that and remove the if else statement. There is one more example of that in the update method. When we assign the is running variable to a button being pressed, let's think how a human would read this code. When a left shift button is pressed, player is running. And if the button is not pressed, player is not running. Pretty long and redundant sentence. Now let's simply assign the isRunning variable to input.getKey and read the code again. Now it would sound like that. Player is running only when the left shift is pressed. Sentence is much shorter, there is no redundant information and we got rid of several lines of code. We have made a lot of changes, so let's test the game. It's always a good practice to test frequently during refactor. Automated tests, whenever possible, are of great help in such situations. We don't have them here, so let's just shoot some people instead. Now it's time for the rule number nine. Prefer positive conditionals. Use methods that return a positive result and names without words like not or isn't. The handle shooting method uses the has not enough ammo method. This method returns a positive value 
when the result has a negative context. In those situations, we will be forced to use a double negative like in the highlighted example. Let's refactor this method so it returns a positive value in the positive context. Let's find the method and flip its result. So first name it has enough ammo, which has a positive context, and return true when current ammo is bigger than zero. And while we are here, we can hop to the last rule of this video, rule number 10. Avoid redundant comments. Above the has enough ammo method, someone added a comment describing what this method does. If we are naming our methods correctly, we should not have to add such a comment that basically duplicates information from the name. If a method does not include some complicated algorithm that would benefit from some additional explanations, it's redundant and not necessary. So let's remove it. And that's it for the first 10 tips on how to write clean code. There is still a lot of work to do and in the next video, among others, we will see how to get rid of switch statements, how to properly define methods parameters and avoid big monolithic magnet classes. I would also like to tell you that my Patreon page is up and running. Please consider supporting the channel. Having funds for outsourcing editing of videos would help me post videos more frequently. You can find the link in the description below. You can find the whole project on GitHub. The link is in the description below. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe if you like my content. Also leave a comment, I am happy to answer all of your questions. Take care.